Hey hackers, welcome back to my channel. My name is Katherine, and today we're gonna to be looking at what specs you should be looking for in a computer. Now when you're looking at what computer to buy, there's lots of confusing things. There's this thing called the processor, there's RAM, there's hard drives, there's solid state drives, there's all these different things. And today we're gonna break them down. The first thing we're gonna look at is something called the processor speed. And so this is the speed of something called the CPU, the central processing unit. It's the speed at which your computer can run applications. And so this is not the internet, this is how fast Photoshop or Word or email or things like that that are local on your computer. It's how fast you can use them, type into them, edit your documents, that sort of thing. Technically, a browser is one of these applications. You use it to browse the internet, but for the most part, the processor speed is most important for things that are locally on your computer. Image and video files are significantly bigger than text files, and so when you're editing something, if your processor speed is too low, your computer might slow down a bit. If you just need your computer for email or or word or cer certain things that just deal with text, then the processor speed is not that important. The processor speed, again, is the speed of something called the CPU, the central processing unit, and that's really the brains of the computer. It deals with everything that your computer is computing. The types of processors you can get really fall into three categories. You have the i3, i5, and i7. If you're just doing email, internet browsing, or listening to music, then the core i3 should be just fine. It's the slowest of the bunch, but it's still pretty fast. The processor i5 gives you greater speeds and allows you to manage more applications. And so think gaming, a little bit of video editing, those sorts of things. If you are doing light video editing or light photo editing, then a core i5 should be just fine. If you begin doing intense gaming or intense video editing, and by that I mean you're doing it like eight hours a day, it's your life, you're using this device for your job, and that job is in video editing and in gaming, you're gonna want the i7. It's the most sophisticated processor of the lot. With technology getting better and better, we also have i9 cores. These are a little bit rare. Usually an i7, if you're doing a ton of video editing, an i7 should be just fine. But they do have i9 now, and that'll give you even better performance. Within each CPU group, and so if you think of the i3, i5, i7, there are variations. You might see something like 6500 or 7700. Basically what that means is the higher the number, the better the speed. An i7 is always gonna be better than an i5, and an i5 is always gonna be faster and give you better performance than an i3, but within that there are variations, and so you might have an i5-6500, an i5-7700, and then a different i7. The i5-7700 would be better than the i5-6500, but still not as good as the i7. With your processor, you're also going to have something called clock speed. The clock speed is how many clock cycles a CPU can perform per second. So really what this means is the higher the clock speed, the faster the computer. If you're using a laptop for basic functions, and so think email, listening to music, a 1.5 gigahertz clock speed should be just fine. However, if you're using your laptop for lots of games and apps, and you're doing lots of things with it, it's your daily job, then you might wanna look for a clock speed that is 2.3 gigahertz or higher. Now, of course, you could buy the computer with the fastest CPU, the best clock speed, all of that is fine and done, but the better the CPU and the higher the clock speed, the shorter the battery life, and of course, the higher price. And so if you have this really intense processor and you're getting a laptop, that means that it's gonna take a lot of energy, and so you're gonna shorten your battery life. If you're okay with that, that's great. It really just depends on if you're okay with that. Better CPUs and faster clock speeds also increase that price, and so you're gonna pay more for a computer that has an i7 than one that has an i5. Now the CPU, the processor, the clock speed, these are not the only things we look at when we're buying a computer. Another thing we look at is something called RAM, and so random access memory. RAM represents the memory that's available to your computer. So think the memory that Word and Photoshop, as these programs are running, the memory that they're using. More RAM allows you to run more applications at once. This means you could listen to music, chat with someone on Facebook Messenger, edit a video, 
all at the same time without your computer slowing down. But that's only possible if you have a good amount of RAM. If you do not have a good amount of RAM, ultimately your applications are going to buffer or they're going to freeze temporarily until they get access to that memory. The more RAM on your computer, the better. Newer computers usually have a minimum of four gigabytes of RAM, but ideally you'll want eight gigabytes of RAM. If you're doing video editing or gaming intensely every day, this is what you're doing at your job, then you'll probably wanna get into the 16 gig gigabyte or 32 gigabyte range for your RAM. The processor speed is kind of tied to the RAM and that if you have a really high processor speed but low RAM, you'll be able to process all this stuff but your applications are gonna freeze because there's not enough memory for them to use dynamically in their program. On the other hand, if you have a good amount of RAM but low processing speed, then your computer is just gonna compute things slower. Your computer will be slow. This means you'll want your RAM and CPU to match because you don't wanna waste money on one or the other, you want them to match because if you have a really good CPU, not great RAM, that doesn't do you any good and vice versa. All right, so we've talked about the CPU, we've talked about the RAM, we've talked about clock speeds, now we're going to talk about hard disks. The hard disk is where your computer stores permanent data or permanent files. And so think of your text files, your image files, your video files. These are often files that you're creating or downloading from the internet and they're being stored on your computer and you can access them through the file system. And so you can click on Finder if you're on a Mac or you click Start and you can navigate and view your files. With the hard disk, the bigger the hard disk, the more files you can store. So the more images, the more videos, the more documents you can create locally on your computer. There are two main types of hard disks. There's the solid state drive and the hard disk drive. The solid state drive or the SSD is generally more expensive, but it is also faster. If you wanna save money, you can often get a PC that's majority hard disk drive and a little bit of solid state drive where you store the core OS, the core Windows OS on the solid state drive so it's faster to access. And that's where your program speeds matter more. And for your documents, the things that are relatively relatively static, you can put those on the hard disk drive where the speed matters less. Most computers will often come with a hard drive of 250 gigabytes. And when you're upgrading your computer, you can usually get one with 500 gigabytes or one terabyte or two terabytes. And then you can choose whether you want a hard disk drive or a solid state drive. Every computer will have some type of hard drive, but now as we venture into the cloud and all of this new technology, we have services like Google Cloud, Dropbox, OneDrive, and that's kind of changing the state of how much storage you need for your computer. If you wanna store most of your files in the cloud, so say you're a big Google customer, you bought a ton of storage on Google, and you wanna use Google Cloud to store all your documents, your files, your spreadsheets, your images, all of that good stuff, then you could probably get a computer with less storage and just go to the minimum on that. It's not gonna affect anything else in your computer except how many files you can store and how quickly you can access those files that you're storing. Now, the reason you might not do that, not put all of your files in the cloud, is if you're dealing with video content consistently and sometimes image content consistently, and especially like 3D modeling or something like that. And that's because these files are very heavy. They take up a lot of data. And so when we're transferring them to the cloud and back, it takes a lot of time. In those cases, you might get a really beefy laptop and store everything on the laptop but usually you want some redundancy in your files and so you might get another hard drive and so you'll buy a hard drive that's maybe one or two terabytes and then you'll connect that via USB to your computer. If you're not dealing with a ton of larger files then maybe the cloud is the better way to go. There's also a thing called the graphics card. And if you're not into gaming or super intense editing, then you really don't need to worry about this. If you do gaming, you'll want to avoid any integrated graphics cards. And so that's like the Intel Iris. Now, of course, the Macs, guess what? They use the Intel Iris. And so that's why all these PC gamers hate Macs because they're using these integrated graphics cards. They're not using a dedicated graphics card, like an Nvidia graphics card. So that's why if you're a gamer, that's you probably go to PC. Now to get into a little bit more of the fluffy stuff, the screen and the screen size and the screen resolution. You're looking at the screen all the time. So of course you want a nice screen with a high resolution. The higher the resolution, the better, but usually a 1080p resolution for a 13 inch computer should be fine. 
If you do want a bigger screen, then you're gonna wanna get a better graphics card so it can render the content on all of those pixels. There's also ports, and so every computer has a way for you to input data to your computer, whether that's a USB port, it's a USB-C port, there's all these different ports, there's an SD card port, all of these different things. And so what ports you need and how many dongles you wanna carry is really up to you, but that's something to consider when you're looking at your laptop. Does it have the ports that you use often? Do you have an easy dongle that you could exchange for it? So if it doesn't have that port, it's not a big deal. So let's do a quick example here and analyze some of the specs of Apple's computers. So I'm gonna go to apple.com right here and we're gonna click on Mac, and so we're gonna check out these computers. There's a bunch of different computers here, the iMac, the MacBook Pro, all of this. Let's check out the MacBook Pro first here. And so, more power, more performance, more Pro, so let's analyze that power, and let's just say we're gonna buy one. So we're gonna go, say, with the 13-inch, and we have all of these different things. So here we have 1.4 gigahertz quad core processor with turbo boost up to 3.9. And so I've looked into turbo boost a little bit, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but basically what it means, it's gonna always have a minimum of 1.4 gigahertz, but when you're starting to do more intense processes, then it's gonna go up to potentially 3.9 gigahertz. And so of course, you know, if you're doing simple, if you're doing simple things, this should be fine for you. Ideally, you'd want something a little bit higher for the base. There's also no guarantee that the processor will ever go up to this amount. And so this is a little strange. We get 128 gigabytes of storage, and so it's a little bit on the lower end. Of course, you can augment that with buying like an external hard drive or doing Google Cloud what matters to you. You also have to know that the OS is going to take up some of that storage. And so you're not gonna get 128 off the bat. You might get a little bit lower than that. We're gonna keep going. We get the touch bar, we get touch ID, great, you know, a feature. And then we go down here, we get an i5 processor. And so this is a pretty baseline processor. If you're doing simple video editing, nothing too crazy, an i5 should be fine for you. We get the Turbo Boost, we have the Intel Iris, we get eight gigabytes of RAM, so that's pretty good. Um, a little low on storage, and then these are our ports, three ports. The difference over here is we go over here, it's still an i5 with 1.4 gigahertz, quad core, it has a little bit more storage. So you're paying 200 bucks for a little bit more storage. Whether 128 gigabytes is significant is up to you, depending on how you're augmenting with, with the other pieces, but that's something to consider. That's the big difference between these two. And then from this price to this price, we actually upgrade our clock speed. And so this is our clock speed here. We have our CPU processor. It's still an i5 and we get a little bit more. So we get a little bit higher on the turbo boost and you pay 300 bucks more for that and you get that 256 gigabytes of storage then if we're feeling super fancy we still get that clock speed of 2.5 of 2.4 gigahertz quad core with the turbo boost up to 4.1 gigahertz and you get a little bit more storage for another 200 bucks and so this has 512 gigabytes of storage and you get that here other than that, thank you so much for watching. My name is Catherine, and if you learned something new in this video, comment down below, tell me what you learned, and happy hacking.